so yeah, this is the second uh, experiment that we did uh, during the, the week uh, with uh, with the help of Mathieu. Okay. It started from a discussion that we have one of the uh, one of the first days that is related again to how the community algor uh, community detection algorithm works and uh, uh, basically how it is now, which is kind of a black box. Uh, so these two experiments were two ways to kind of unpack what the uh, the, the algorithm is doing and the first one is um, so that the idea was to find the visual ways to encourage multiple runnings runnings of the algorithm and uh, in this case uh, we basically explored uh, how we could represent what the algorithm is doing uh, and again here we did uh, um, a couple of uh, a couple of experiments okay. uh, which uh, starts from start from the idea of showing each action that the algorithm does to group uh, uh, various nodes and uh, we quickly noticed that we have chaos in the beginning and then uh, kind of stability in the end uh, so we um, we started to think about how to map it uh, um, abstracting it from the from the network because we saw uh, that uh, in this way we could kind of incorporate uh, uh, the uh, clustering on the on the network and with a, with an additional visualization and we tried to look at it as in the same way that the spatialization algorithm works so that we see what is going on and uh, in these experiments we basically every time we have a rectangle that represents vertically all the nodes that we have in our network and horizontally all the iterations and actions of groupings that the algorithm does uh, so there are a couple of examples so the, the main idea that we uh, followed was how to use color to and color spaces to map this evolution of the communities in the network we tried a couple of things. These are our sketches. Yeah, this is where designer actually came. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is great. Is this, it's uh, what you've done first. Yes, uh, during your brainstorming and uh, yes, I think it's fine to see. Yeah, the we raw start. Uh, yeah, we start to kind of put on paper what we had yeah. in mind, and then we kind of work there yeah, so nice. on uh, backwards to reach the the coding itself. Um, so we did. Uh, um, a cup this first experiment that shows uh, how um the um the algorithm works uh, from the first uh, iteration which is the one on the left that starts from unsaturated nodes to the ones on the right that are completely saturated and we basically see how the the, the groupings are are are, are um, aggregating with each other in this specific case, we have a problem with the color scale, but basically we map uh, uh, groups to the hue of the color space and saturation and value to the number of iterations as, as soon as the, uh, the groups start to define themselves. Um, with a similar um, approach, we mapped uh, the Scilab color space, mm -hmm. which produces um, many uh, uh, more distinct colors but that sometimes they can be harder to identify but the cool thing that came out out of this visualization is that uh, uh, it's possible to see the final steps uh, where the major regroupings of the nodes happen which is something that you don't really realize when you uh, when you use the modularity this is something that I, I something that i didn't know mm -hmm. uh, about the algorithm the modularity algorithm uh, we did some animations. We, you you can check it, check them out on the uh, on on the notebook. We also avoided colors, so we tried to use bl just black and white to sediment the uh, the the evolution of the of the clusters. And then finally, the last thing that we did. So these first cases start from uh, they assign colors to each uh, uh, node to define their own cluster and then they move on and they gradually focus into a, um, a specific color but Mathieu also had the idea of working backwards so what happens if we assign the colors to the final clusters and then move uh, uh, backwards in assigning the colors and as you can see here Oh, there's no oh. it gives a completely different uh, result even though the um 
the the starting point is the same okay. so we have a, a a different idea of how the uh how the the algorithm works uh so yeah the cool thing about these experiments is that they give us a, a way to kick start the conversation on mm -hmm. how to uh, how to understand visually what is going on here and also how to involve people that are not technically uh, expert in this uh, but it also um, i think uh, helped us uh, in uh, i mean it starts uh, the 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 next step which, which would be what happens when we give this to uh, people that use gephi so yeah. it could be an exp uh, a testing moment of the algorithm and that's it amazing uh, representations thank you yeah, it's really interesting to see how gephi is a data visu data visualization tool focus on one type of data visualization and I think it's really interesting to see how you can include other kinds of representations to give more readability on this uh, gigantic uh, data viz. Thank you, guys. Super impressive. I have a question about the how did you do that in the sense that Java uh, GIF is, is uh, developed in, in Java. So how did you get access to this uh, you know single step of iterations of the uh, of the modularity uh, algorithm. I mean, you don't even discuss it, right? So, it, but yeah. how did you uh, this do is, that? Uh, this is part of what Mathieu did in the first part of the week. So we started with this. Uh, so the, the, the discussion that we had at the beginning was what, hap what if we, we, we would be able to see what the algorithm is doing. Okay. And that, uh, and that di mm, discussion that we had at the beginning was the starting point on on structuring the data to see what is going on in the algorithm. So okay. uh, I think that uh, Mathieu created a, a script that logs each step that the... Is the Giphy toolkit, I suppose? So basically what I did is go into, create a new branch of Giphy as if I were fixing a bug. Yeah. And then um, just go into the algorithm that I know. So I went into the different places to just grab the information. This was not extracted, so I went in place to get it and save it into a file so it's kind of tinkering right now you can't get it easily but of course the the end of the road might be to then take the visuals and then put them back into Gephi and it would then fit exactly where i extracted the information so i think yeah. i will i will ask for a ticket to put an, <laughs> a, an api on the, the module on the Louvre algorithm so we can access this kind of uh, data uh, automatically <laughs> and then we can be smart I, I, we didn't do that now but now we can compare that to for instance what Thiago Peugeotto has developed yes, uh, yes. in Giphy with me last time similar structure of the algorithm but different metric to optimize yeah. so is it the same is it very different we want to see and now we can see differently how it behaves yeah yeah of course